Hi, I'm Ted Venema. Let's talk about tympanometry. Tympanometry is a test that should be used in combination with the typical audiogram that tests pure tone hearing sensitivity. Tympanometry is really a test of middle ear status. Tympanometry should be used when a conductive hearing loss is seen in an audiogram. When there's a difference between air conduction hearing levels or air conduction sensitivity, hearing through headphones that is, compared to hearing through the bone. And as we said during the audiometry talk, reading the audiogram, if there's a difference between hearing sensitivity, between the way you hear through headphones as opposed to the way you hear through the bone, that means there's a problem with the outer or middle ear. And we call this an air bone gap. When there's a difference in hearing sensitivity from air conduction compared to bone conduction, we should use tympanometry to back this up. The nice thing of tympanometry is it's a non-behavioral test. It's quick. It's often done on children. Pediatricians understand, and understand it and have used it for years with kids looking for otitis media. And let's go to slide number two here and we'll just see how it works. When air pressure is equal on both sides of the tympanic membrane, that creates the least stiffness of the middle ear and the most compliance. In plain English, when air pressure is even steven between the outer ear canal and the middle ear space, when the air pressure is even on both sides of the eardrum, the middle ear is most efficient at passing sound through. It's all about air pressure being equal on both sides of the drum. When what we do during tympanometry is we emit a tone at a steady intensity and the tone comes out of this probe, we make an airtight seal. You'll notice there's three holes in this probe. One is a little speaker that emits a tone. The second one is a microphone that measures what sound is bouncing back off the eardrum. And the third little hole is an air pressure changer. It changes air pressure from positive to normal to negative. And so you're making positive to a vacuum. And so the probe speaker emits out a tone. The probe mic picks up whatever bounces back off the eardrum while the air pressure changes from positive to negative. And we want to find out at what air pressure does the least amount of sound bounce back. That is, at what air pressure does most sound go through? Because remember, it's all about the air pressure being even on both sides of the drum. If this happens, if most sound goes through the ear canal or through the ear drum, into the middle ear, if most sound goes through that way, when air pressure in the outer ear canal is at room air pressure, this must mean, therefore, that the air pressure here is room air pressure. So therefore, tympan tympanometry measures in the outer ear canal can tell the status of air pressure in the middle ear. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's a really interesting, quick test. Takes about five minutes maximum. And that's why the test is, is also of value. It's really a test of middle ear efficiency. If the air pressure is even steven on both sides of the drum, most sound will go through. And if that most sound goes through when this air pressure is at room air pressure, then we know air pressure in the middle ear space is room air pressure. Here's what the tympanogram looks like, kind of like a pup tent. This axis here shows negative room air pressure and positive air pressure. The vertical axis shows middle ear compliance. Remember, the middle ear is a stiffness-dominated system. There's very little mass in the middle ear. The middle ear ossicles are the smallest bones in the body. The middle ear is quite a stiff system. So we're, use, we're trying to find out at what air pressure is the, is, the, is the middle ear most and least stiff. And we tell that by the amount of sound that's bouncing back off the drum. So we begin at positive air pressure 
in the ear canal. Positive air pressure with an airtight seal with that probe in the ear canal. And when most sound bounces back off the drum, because now you're making that middle ear really stiff, you're, you're, you're adding air pressure even. It's a stiff system already, but now you're adding air pressure to it. Well, then almost all the sound is bouncing back off the drum. And so we've got low compliance. Positive air pressure, low compliance, meaning all the sound is bouncing back. When we change the air pressure in the outer ear canal to room air pressure, least sound bounces back. Remember, the ear, middle ear is most efficient when pressure is even steven on both sides of the drum. Well, now least amount of sound is bouncing back and you have highest compliance. The middle ear is least stiff. When we continue now to make the air pressure negative, once again, we're returning to an unhappy status. We're stiffening that middle ear system again, even more, and we have low compliance. Once again, all the sound is bouncing back off the drum. And clients can literally hear this. When you're getting a tympanogram done, you'll hear You'll literally hear it. The test is quick. The client can kind of feel those little bit, bits of air pressure changes. Always remember, tympanometry is not like pneumatic otoscopy, which actually moves the drum. We're not trying to find out how much the eardrum wiggles. That's really an incorrect conception of tympanometry. Tympanometry is a test of middle ear efficiency, measuring and comparing the amounts of sound that bounce back off the drum as we change ear air pressure. Amounts of sound bouncing back off the drum as we change air pressure. Let's move to a picture of otitis media and tympanometry. Here's a normal tympanogram, often called a type A. You can see its peak is over normal room air pressure. That's happy land. Otitis media now enters the picture. Early otitis media, negative middle ear pressure. Eardrum is retracted inward. So guess what? We've got to use negative air pressure in the outer ear canal so that the air pressure in the outer ear canal is even steven with the negative pressure within the middle ear space. So now we've got to use negative air pressure in order for least amount of sound to bounce back, for the middle ear to be most compliant least stiff. And this is called a type C tympanogram. It's, it has a peak like the type A, but it's over negative air pressure because we needed negative air pressure in the outer ear canal to match the negative air pressure behind the eardrum. As the otitis media advances, now the middle ear space begins to become filled with serous fluid and then purulent otitis media develops. You've got a fluid-filled middle ear and an infected middle ear, and now the type C tympanogram begins to become very rounded. And finally, you've got a flat tympanogram, a type B, showing no peak whatsoever because, hey, changes of air pressure in the outer ear canal are no competition for pus behind the drum. No amount of changes of air pressure in the outer ear canal is going to counteract the fact that now the middle ear space is filled with fluid. So a type A goes to a type C with early otitis media and then transitions to a type B showing advanced otitis media. And again, tympanometry is done so quickly it's unbelievable. That's not the only thing it can talk about. This last slide shows tympanograms associated with normal hearing and otosclerosis. As we know, otosclerosis is a soft, porous growth of bone around the footplate of the stapes in the ossicular chain. Otosclerosis has nothing to do with air pressure anomalies behind the eardrum like otitis media, otosclerosis is an artificial stiffening of the whole middle ear system. As such, its tympanogram will still have a peak, much like the type A normal tympanogram does. However, due to the stiffness that the, that the otosclerosis causes, the peak will be shallower than normal. So you'll have less compliance. It'll be more stiff. 
and hence the tympanogram is still called a type A because its peak is over regular room air pressure, but it's stiffer than normal. It's called an AS. So in one fell swoop, tympanometry can talk about stages of otitis media, it can back up findings of otosclerosis, it's a useful, quick, non non-behavioral type of test. We hope you've enjoyed this little vignette on tympanometry. Thanks for listening.